Good evening and welcome to our YouTube channel, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight we have episode two of Canis Mysterium with Wayne Worthy as our GM. Now tonight, well, last week, I kind of decided that what I would do is my character, um, Theo Raptus, would write a journal based on what was going on, and uh, that's what I'm going to read for you here. So go ahead and start. Um, let's see. Theo's journal, October 1930. I was called into the university president's office today, along with Chang, Saul, and Robbie. Apparently, Georgie was supposed to be there, too, but for some reason he was delayed, probably a girl. Adelson was there, but it was Dr. Miller of the biology department who started the conversation. He wanted us to know about something strange going on out in Coldwater Falls. He asked for our discretion in handling the situation, so as it don't get back to the press, the university would like us to keep it quiet until the news breaks. It seems there's this guy who suffered some kind of uh, psychological break and is convinced that he's a dog, not the sweet little puppy variety, but uh, the kind that rips out your throat the first chance it gets. They've got him locked up in Coldwater Falls, and they want us to go out there and take a look. They're hoping we'll compose some sort of white paper, which might uh, bring some prestige to the university. They promised us all kind of perks if we follow through. Dr. Manson wanted us to meet with Archibald Clark, the constable of Coldwater Falls, who would give us more information on the case. Uh, he'd been looking for a place to keep the dog man, but with the crash last year, the asylums are all filled. And then Doc Manson says something that gives us all the heebie-jeebies. Seems there was this little girl that went missing, and when they found this dog man, he was gnawing on her leg. Just her leg. The rest of her is still missing. So the boys wanted to do a little research. I figured... I'd let them goof around at the library while I procured some decent transportation. No offense to Robbie, but three hours in a Model T would have been like hell on our keisters. Joey McIntosh lent me his Chrysler Imperial, uh, since he owed me for volunteering hours on his uh, sleep depri deprivation study. What a, bree what a sweet breeze of that car is. It's a shame we had to leave the top up, but the rain, was, the rain didn't leave off until we got there. So the Hardy Boys looked up a number of interesting related topics at the library, everything from disassociative personality disorder to uh, religious spirit possession to lycanthropy. I figured cannibalism might give us some, some insight into uh, something, but nothing much came of it. In any case, we learned what we could and we headed for the country. Chang sat in the back seat, calm and serene, uh, through most of the trip, but Robbie kept grabbing my arm like he, I was his girlfriend every time I swerved a little or hit a bump, and Saul kept saying I, was hitting on all, I wasn't hitting on all sixes. But we got there without a scratch. As we pulled into Cold Water Falls, the constable and his deputy met us at the front office. Uh, that's Constable Clark and Deputy Andy. Clark took us to the local diner to give us the preliminaries while Andy took our things to the Lockhart boarding house. Uh, the waitress was a pretty little thing, Millie, whose father, Phil, ran the local tool and tackle. Eddie was the cook, and I must say, he's the bee's knees in the kitchen. Nothing beats country cooking. Clark, took a, uh, Clark told us the man we had come there to see was an artist and a sculptor named Harlan Dupree and that uh, they had grown up together. He had a wife, Elizabeth, and a daughter, Clementine, and was a man he considered to be a regular guy. Seems Harlan lost his wife to influenza back in the pandemic of 1918 and had suffered from chronic depression ever since. He had turned to drinking to deaden his sorrow, as so many before him have done, and he began neglecting his daughter, who eventually went to live with her aunt up at the Lockhart Place. Uh, it's possible that his long depression led to his eventual breakdown. Last Tuesday, a local pumpkin farmer's wife, Hannah Miller, uh, reported their daughter missing. It was the night of the full moon, and little Bethany had gone out to use the outhouse when her mother heard her scream. When she went to investigate, the girl was gone. Her husband and a number of neighbors have been out looking for her since yesterday. 
It was just this morning when Phil, of Phil's Tool and Tackle, found Harlan on his front porch gnawing on what he thought was an animal leg. He grabbed Constable Clark and they threw a blanket over him and wrestled him to, into his cell. It was then that Andy went back out and saw that it was the girl's leg with her pretty little powder blue socks still on her pretty little feet. Later on, Jacob Miller identified his daughter's leg. It seems likely to me that a lynching may soon follow. Uh, we need to solve this case. As we were getting ready to leave the diner, we noticed a strange-looking man carrying a large suitcase, probably a salesman. The constable said he had shown up in town three days previous, but he didn't know who he was or what he sold. He didn't seem like much of a salesman. The man got up and left before we did, but you don't forget a face like that. Thinking about the details of this case, it seemed to Solomon that considerable strength would have been needed to tear the little girl's leg apart like that. It didn't seem to be hacked off, but ripped off at the knee. I guess with the right leverage it could be done. The constable then took us to see Harlan by my request. Poor Harlan Dupree lay on the floor of the one and only cell in the constable's office. He was filthy and reeked. He became immediately aggressive, growling like a mongrel dog. His actions perfectly mimicked dog behavior, so much so that it was easy to imagine that the man that was Harlan Dupree was no longer there. He even took my stay, uh, he even took my stare as a challenge of dominance. He didn't react at all to the sound of his name. And then Robbie did perhaps the most reckless thing I have ever seen him do, more reckless than when he dated both the Benedictus sisters at the same time. He pulled out a biscuit and stuck his hand between the bars. I can only guess what he was thinking. Now I would like to say that Harlan suddenly acted like a puppy, the puppy that I mentioned before, but the fact is that Robbie very nearly lost a finger and I did lose one of my white shirts. Uh, it, was a tense, it was tense at the time, but also funny as hell. Uh, we have been joking with Robbie about possibly him becoming a werewolf. After that, we went up to Lockhart's, where we met Esmeralda and Clementine. We got settled in our rooms upstairs and were told the schedule for meals. We figured we would meet the constable at 7 a.m. the next morning. But just before bed, we caught a glimpse of that same stranger. Apparently, we're staying in the same boarding house. Clementine called him Mr. John Smith, a fake name if ever I heard one. Uh, the guy gives me the creeps, but then again, I may be just a little superficial. You can't judge a book by its cover. Anyway, it was time for bed, and after I brushed my teeth and I hit, I hit the sack, I could hear Chang snoring like a buzzsaw through the walls. My God, what a monastery full of snoring monks would sound like, I can't imagine. And that's where he finished. Yeah, very nice, very nice. So each and every one of you are um, heading to bed. Um, is it, did anybody lose any sanity last time? I, I think a little bit. Okay. Well, you guys will regain your sanity overnight. Um, in the morning, uh, you wake up. Uh, now, what time were you trying to wake up? Well, we're trying to meet the constable at 7, right? So. Okay. Well, my character, uh, because, uh, like, cause again, like, he wants to stay in a routine, which is why he went to bed so early. Okay. So he'd probably be waking up early, too. So... So but uh, when he wakes up, though, he goes and, like, goes back to his booga and, like, mega takes by it. Because he okay. needs to stay in that routine. So okay. uh, he'd probably wake up uh, extra early, mega take for about 10, 20 minutes, and then he'd get up for breakfast. Okay. Well, breakfast is going to be served at 8. So you guys wanted to meet the constable at 7. Um Okay. Since you're, since you're the first one up... um you notice that there's a note that gets slipped under your, your door. Oh, interesting. Uh, I pick up uh, what looks... Can I, like, tell anything from the handwriting? Like, uh, uh, it's just a folded there. piece of paper. Okay. Okay, um, like, what looks it saying? So basically, um, it basically says, um, boys, um... I know we were supposed to meet up early this morning, but I have a few things to take care of. Um, Andy will be kind of uh, indisposed for the beginning of the, the morning, 
but you fellas are free to go over there and look around at the uh, at the Pre's uh, workshop if you want. Um, I'll send Andy over as soon as he's he's done um, doing some of this this here business here, um, and then his signed Constable Algebra Clark, uh, Clark. And each and every one of you are going to get that same sort of letter under your door when you wake up. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. We have our own rooms. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm also curious. Do we know what the the bus schedule is? Because we're expecting George. Um, you didn't ask when you were there. Said so you were taking a car. However, George, um, I'll say that maybe a few hours after the rest of the group left, you finally untwined yourself between those two later ladies that you were. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and you you go down to the. Uh, you go down to the, the dean's office, and they pretty much fill you in on what they filled everybody else in and asked if you were uh, interested in, of course, since you're here, you're, you're pretty interested. Um, they said that they've left, the bus has left um, for the day, and it won't arrive to that particular area, to Coldwater, until Monday. However, they are willing to let you borrow the car that the other guys didn't use. Okay. So... You're making your way to town. You'll get there in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what time you left. But um, I'll have you join them for breakfast, more or less. Okay. No problem, so are, no boss. So what are the rest of you guys doing? I'll say it's about 6, 6.30. Okay. Morning routine, brushing teeth. Yeah. Getting ready to... Yeah, the usual. Go for breakfast. Knocking on everybody's door, making sure everybody's up. Wayne, okay. the first thing I do when I wake up is I smoke a cigarette and drink a shot of whiskey from my flask. Okay. So right. you carry a flask around, all right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Somebody knocks on my door and I, like, from the slowly process. open my eyes. Exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll say that you guys get ready. Um, you get washed, dressed, um, and I guess you guys are heading down to the common room. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, see, I, I turn to uh, Solomon and I'm like, whew, starting early, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's light outside, isn't it? I guess. It's not, it, it is October, so it's still pretty dark out. Mm. Um, but if you do take take a look outside, the uh, you see the light coming over the horizon. The the dark is in complete black. And it's sort of that purplish, bluish color you get in the uh, dawn. Oh. Um, you know you, what? Yeah, it's it's not going to be a sunny day. It is still cloudy out. Okay. I um, also say a prayer for the little girl while I'm meditating. Okay. okay. Hey guys. Yeah. We're all together, right? Yeah. I thought of something last night before I went to bed. That weird sales guy that we saw. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering why the constable or the deputy sheriff, uh, whatever he is, um, why haven't they started investigating or questioning people in town? Like him, for example. He's a stranger in town. I mean, uh, he seems kind of, you know, from what everyone says, he seems a little bit weird. Um, Strange looking, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't started questioning. You know, it's a small town. Usually small towns, you know, a stranger comes in town, especially around the time of a murder. Um, I wonder why they haven't, or if they have questioned him, they haven't said anything to us about it. Mm. You know? Maybe... Maybe it's too fresh. Uh, maybe that guy will come down and have breakfast with us, and we can just friendly ask him a few questions. Yeah, if he does, I think I think we should. I mean, him. definitely. Even if the guy didn't like isn't directly responsible, I think that he knows something. Right. Well. Yeah. yeah. I have no way of knowing that. I think he knows something, even if he doesn't know it himself. There's something about that guy. Like he's he's yeah. Well, like I said, it's, it's, he, sound, he sounds like he's got a fake name. Mm-hmm. But he's hiding something, clearly. Maybe. Or maybe Perhaps. he's just uh, <laughs> that kind of a person. We'll see. But I think after, after we have breakfast, I think we should go over to Harlan's and see what we can find out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, so I'm hungry. All right, so... Hours pass by. Um, 
during that time, you see the milkman. He comes up. He delivers a crate of milk. You see a paper boy come by. He delivers a stack of papers for the guests and everything like that. And um, you see um, Esmeralda, you know, she's up early. She looks all perky like she had 10 cups of coffee. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys doing this, this morning here? Hello, Esmeralda. Oh, well, I'm, you guys look hungry. Breakfast will be, like I said, at 8 o'clock shop. And as you're, you know, you're talking to her, you do smell some food going on in the kitchen. And mm. it smells good. It smells good. Yeah, she says, um, can I get you boys some coffee or something while you, you're you sitting here waiting for us? Coffee, please. Some orange juice would do. Uh, freshly squeezed. Anything also, else? For... I I ask for you to not give me uh, any meat. I, I... No meat? Yeah. Well, what, what do you want for, for breakfast? What do you eat for breakfast? You're, you're a thin little thing right there. Uh, do you have for... some eggs? Some toast? Well, yes, of course. Yeah, I've got then that, that will do. Some toast. eggs and some toast. Well, darling, this is the, the way it's set up here. It's kind of like a banquet. You know, you we, we'll, we'll set out the plates, we'll set out the food and everything like that, and you guys can help yourself. Oh, I we'll see. We'll bring out more until nine o'clock a.m. As okay. much as we have, you know, if we're, we're all out, then we're all out. Let me tell for. God bless you. <laughs> and your God bless you as well. <laughs> so she goes out and she gets everybody coffee and uh, she brings in the milk and you see Clementine and Clementine looks like she's kind of worn out a little bit waking up this early going to bed pretty late but she's out and about and she's she's looking at you you, you gentlemen um, give me a psychology role everyone Okay. Yeah, sure. Since you guys are all in the common room, oh, like, yeah, okay. by, she's, she's right, just glancing at all of you um, now and again. I got less than half. Okay. I failed miserably. Okay. Hold on a sec. I got an 85. I totally failed that. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys are just, you know, talking amongst yourselves. Uh, I imagine... Darvin, since you're, you're or, um, I'm sorry, Solomon, imagine since you, you drink in the morning, you probably smoke as well, so mm -hmm. you're, you're having a cigarette. Um, I do, yep. And, um, but, but uh, Theo, you realize that every time she's looking at you, it looks like she has something on her mind, like she wants to say something to you guys, but right. her honor's around and she's busy and... She's busy going around setting up for for breakfast. Is it kind of a worried look, or is it kind yeah, of just kind of a... like a? It's it's a look that she. It looks like she wants to talk to you guys and see what you guys are up to. What you guys, um, she knows that you're you're here to investigate um, her father's, you know, that, that the whole case with her father. But um, it looks like she wants to know what's going on. Basically, okay. she's kind of. You know, this is a small town, so she's kind of nosy a little bit. She's kind of dusting and, you know, cleaning up around your area, but, like, listening in on your conversations, seeing if, if she can pick up on anything. Um, so but, she knows something happened with Harlan. Well, she does. And I'm pretty much the, the town, well, I'm not going to get to that yet, but, like, she... There, there have been rumors, basically. She wants to know what's going on, basically. She, she heard about their little girl. Everybody knows about their little girl uh, missing. The, the, well, okay, I guess, I guess I'm not supposed to ask you because I don't. My character doesn't know what people know. So. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess we can't really comment on it except for the person that noticed that. Right. So, yeah. All right. Um, so I'll say it's about 7, 7 o'clock, 7.30-ish. And um, you get a, you hear a knock at the door, and Esmeralda, you know, she gets gets to the door, and you see her sort of straighten her her back up a little bit more stiff, and she's kind of dusting herself off, and she goes to open up the door, and she says, "Oh, good morning. How may I help you?" And George, you're standing in front of the door. You see this very beautiful thin woman, sort of uh, older in age, but she, you know, you know that you notice that she would have looked very stunning, and she would have had a lot of suitors. 
you know, when she was a, a lot younger. Okay. Uh, Come on in. I, I, so I step inside, and I'm a young dude, so I'm wearing, like, baggy clothes, you know. all the I'm, I'm also really skinny, so clothes don't really cling to me very well. And I looked at my notepad, and I say, is this the boarding house I'm looking for? And I kind of look Georgie around. Georgie in her. here. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, you're with those gentlemen from, from Arkham. Yeah, yeah, the Arkham guys. Okay. And oh, I, come I, on in. Come on in. Um, I wasn't expecting anybody else, but hey, the more the merrier. We've got plenty of rooms. Um, I'll tell you what, Clementine. Clementine, stop, stop dawdling over there. Come on over here and show this young man to his room. So you're really saying, would you like to stay uh, around your uh, your friends over here, uh, like a room next door to one of your friends? I hate those guys. <laughs> hey. Oh, yeah, my. well, make sure that his room is downwind from us, okay? <laughs> oh, you guys hey. just... Oh, I, I, I think I'm tasting compassion for all beings. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't Actually, like this guy? We don't no, like this guy? We like him. Of course we like him. Oh. <laughs> she, um, she, even, she even picks up on it, because she, she, at first she's kind of startled, and then she looks at you guys smiling, and she looks at... George and I imagine George is kind of like shaking his head like these guys. George, yeah, I'm George, smirking, I'm smirking. George, did you drive all night? Yeah, I mean I'm a little tired, but uh, um, the dean said you know what? I, I get up and I'm like, I'm like, you know, give me your bag and uh, Clementine, you come with me. We'll take your stuff up there. Sit down and eat something. No, well, before you eat, George, you want a shot of whiskey? Uh, <laughs> I smile and I hold my hand and I say, no, no, you know, no, I, I don't. Drink. I don't do oh, that. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's so like, oh. prohibition, isn't it? Yeah, so prohibition. He's a um, he's a good guy. So I'm gonna get up and take take Georgie's bag and. Oh, oh! She says, uh, "Oh, Mister Raptus, you don't have to do that, Clementine." No, I, I want to, Clementine. Show me what room you want to put him in. Oh, very well, Clementine. Just don't dawdle around. We got work to do. Work to do. And she goes off and she, you know, sort of rushes off into the kitchen and, you know, she's got a couple other um, hands in the, the uh, kitchen and around the, the, the boarding house. But, and she's snapping orders to them. Oh, yeah, you know, come on, bring that, bring that carton, carton of milk in here and bring, bring those, those, that crate of milk and, and we need some more eggs. Of course, you know, we got more guests. So bring, bring some more eggs and, yeah, yeah, and you get, and you know, her voice sort of okay. fades off as she's getting, in, you know, further away. So from my it. purpose, of course, is to get Clementine alone for a few minutes. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, that. that's you. You said I think that she wants to. Tell I know, me. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. So okay, we're gonna go upstairs. You think that's a, You think that's a good idea to tell her anything about the case? I'm not gonna tell her anything about the case. Okay. Okay. I want to so see I, what she wants to tell me. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say we don't want to cause that uh, that lynching that you you know that you're worried about. We can't have this conversation though, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So, so trust um, me. <laughs> so, what what are you carrying in, George? Uh, I've got my mom's trunk. So it's a so it's just a big blue trunk. So yeah, I mean it, it's gonna. It, to easily carry, it's going to be two people holding each hand and bring it up the stairs. Okay. Um, so I'll say that um, Theo helps you with the, with your trunk, and uh, Clementine leads the way. She says, okay, you're going to be down here, and she's basically, it's the room at the end of the hall, right across from the, uh, the water closet slash bathroom where you guys can freshen up. Okay. Uh... So I say uh, thanks, and uh, and I look at Theo, and I say, well, you can just like put that anywhere, you know. Right. I know it's it's a little heavy for you, I understand, but you know, you can just put that anywhere, buddy. All right. All right. I don't want to so, strain you. So as she's she's walking off, and she says, oh wow. So how many more of you guys are coming? This is it. So George, got... George was supposed to come with us, but you know, busy. Just a little bit. Getting oh. busy. You better believe it. And I and I and I kind of you know punch uh, Theo on the on the shoulder, and I uh, and I smile at Clementine. It's not polite to, to, to say that in front of a lady. Right. And then whisper to myself. You go downstairs and get something to eat, Clementine. I want to ask you a question. Uh, I say, yeah, okay, yeah, no problem. And I well, go downstairs. 
she she takes you to the to the uh, she takes you both because you're both carrying the suit. Oh, oh okay. I thought we already did that. Yeah, um, but she takes you to the end end of the room, uh, end of the hall, and she says, "Oh, um, George, is it okay? Um, George, you're gonna be, you're gonna be here in this room. Um, here's your key, and um, yeah, just like Theo says, you know, I can take it from here, but um, yeah, just go down there and get ready for breakfast. Um, the washroom is right over here if you want to freshen up a bit, and um, if you have any other questions or any needs, just just let us know." And we'll we'll be happy to oblige. Yeah, no problem. And I uh, and I kind of wave a hand and I head downstairs because I am starving. All right. Okay. So she says, "How can I help you, um, Mr. Theo?" Well, you know that I'm a a student of psychology, and I uh, I got the distinct impression that you wanted to talk to me about something. You have questions that you want to ask? Oh well. You guys, you, you fellows are here to, to investigate what's going on uh, with, with my father, right? Well, what all do you know about what's going on with your father? I, I mean, I heard, I heard a few things. Um, I heard that, you know, he, he was in prison, you know, they, they got him down at the jail. Um, they said something happened with him that he might have attacked somebody, but I, I don't know. Um, well... You know, from what I understand, from what the, the constable told me, Harlan, your your father, has been depressed for a long time, yes? Yeah, yes, yes, he has. Um, ever since my mom died, you know, um, and it's as sad as it is, I, I even got over it. I mean, I was I was a young girl by the, you know, back then. I was about eight, and, you know, I'm not saying that I got over my mother's death, but you know, it still pains me, and I still, I still go and I still visit her, her grave, like now and again. But, you know, bu- you know, with business the way it is around here, especially during the summertime, I barely get to go out. Where, yeah. uh, where is she buried? By the way, if you don't. Oh, remember. She's, she's buried. Uh, there's, there's a cemetery. Um, it's, it's west of town. West of town. Okay. Yeah. Um, um well. I th- we're we're here to try and see what we can do to help your father. I think that uh, that you know, in uh, we it's too early to say, but I think that uh, that he may have had some sort of a psychotic break. Um, uh, it's something that happens to people when they're under a lot of stress or when they're under a lot of grief. Um, but we'll we'll see what we can do for him. Um, I, I also heard that. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, I I also heard a rumor that he's been drinking a lot lately. Is that also true? Yes. I mean, he started just about maybe a few weeks after my mother was buried. He he just started drinking. And um, at first it was just, you know, he would drink just to, I guess, calm his nerves and to sleep himself. He he was having – I'm sorry? I'm just saying to numb the pain. Yeah. 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 If, you know, and at first, I mean, it was, I mean, he was having trouble sleeping, and so he used, you know, some of the, the moonshine to, to, sure. you know, to fall asleep, and then after a while, he just stopped, he stopped doing everything, he stopped going, stopped working, he stopped, you know, taking care of me, and, you know, there were times where, you know, I had to, you know, I was going around, you know, getting meals from the Millers, and sure. I was getting meals from, you know, anybody, and, yeah. Now that was back when you were eight years old, yes. Yeah, and eventually. How old, how old are you now? Oh, I just turned twenty a few weeks ago. Okay, so it's been some time. Um, anything that you could tell us about your father would really help. Um, what are his habits? Does he hang around certain places? Is he? Does he have any friends? Um, the only friend. Well, he doesn't really have many friends because after a while, I mean, I'll I'll say this: like when when my mother died. Um, a lot of people were feeling sorry for him and feeling sorry for us. Um, everybody seemed to love us back then. I mean, he was a really, really nice guy. He would do anything. He would give the shirt off of his own back to help other people. Mm-hmm. And when he was going through this trouble, a lot of people started helping him out. And, you know, his business started going down. And people were giving him money and, you know, giving him food and things like that. And, what he ended up doing with that money was spending it on more booze, and people found out about that, and they just 
I guess they ended up not caring about them anymore. They just stopped hanging around them and stopped caring about them. How and, how close would you say you are to your father? I know that you're, it's your father, but well, do you see him on a regular basis? or No, I, I've, I've seen him, well, haven't seen him for a good, like, three years. Um, but, well... You haven't I mean, seen him for I mean, three years. The last, I'll say this, and she she's thinking about it. She says, "He did he did show up last Tuesday night. He was kind of out of it. He was kind of he was ranting and raving, and he was going on about something. But and as and as she's about to you know continue, you hear Clementine, where are you? Come on down. What did I tell you about Dadling? Come on down. We got work to do." We'll, we'll talk oh, later. It's boring. It's just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What was he? What was he talking about? <laughs> Wait, you're downstairs. You can't. You're not in this. Oh, sorry. Am I downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so she says, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Um, well, we'll talk about this later. But if you can think of anything, if you can think of where he's been walking around or doing stuff, or who he might have been hanging around, or where he's getting, how is he getting his food? How is he getting? You know, things yeah. like that. I know they might seem unimportant, but even little unimportant things might be important. Okay. They might help us put together this, what, what's been going on. She's not in her head, and now she's doing that. You see Esmeralda coming up the stairs, and she's at the end of the hall, and she's like, oh, there you are. I'm you, sorry. She was just helping me with something. From, you're, you're keeping her from her work? I'm oh, sorry. I'm just... Uh, <clears throat> please. She's like... Boy, if you don't have any work to do around here, I got plenty of work for you to do. We we got some uh, manure that needs to be shoveled out in the stables. We got some some more eggs and stuff like that to be picked. Come on, I, we got some cleaning around here to do. You want to go around? You want to take up her precious time? How about I put you to work? And she's she, she and she's wow, like, I'm, you know, I'm not giving you five stars anymore. <laughs> <You're bored laughs> you remember this is before Yelp, so there's no. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry. The old now. version of Yelp was literally yelping in the streets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. I do apologize for for taking her away from her work. Her head. Come on, come on, Clementine. We've got work to do. And Clementine kind of like looks. Looks down. She says, "I'm sorry, Aunt Esmeralda. I'll get to work." And she so she heads back downstairs. But right. she gives her this glance, like she, you know, she has more to say, or she'll she'll come up with some more stuff, and she'll so she'll look for you guys. Now it's it's my intention to share anything that I found out from her with everybody, but not at the breakfast table. Okay. We'll do it when as soon as we're away from any other ears. Okay. So um, you go downstairs, and as you're going downstairs, you know, the tables are, you know, Esmeralda and Clementine are putting the food out on the table, and um, she invites everybody to the table. She says, you know, eat up, you know, and hopefully this is pretty good, better than what you're getting down there at uh, in Arkham. And then she kind of looks at Chang. She's like, especially you. You need some meat on your bones, boy. No, I... And she, she like, the flesh of, you know, uh, got, like, yeah. fruit and toast and, you know, it's it's whole wheat toast and all that stuff. And it's it's a good spread. So you guys will eat and uh, we'll say that, you know, you guys eat. And if you want to discuss anything, you know, over the uh, the breakfast table, feel free. Uh, let me know when you're ready to move out. Okay. Uh, but, like, before she goes, I, like, put my hands together and, like, bow to her slightly and just thank you. And she says, "Oh, you're very welcome." See, a gentleman. She 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 puts a hand on on your shoulder real quick, and she says, "See, a gentleman, a man who knows how to not waste our time." And she kind of looks at Theo with with these daggers in her eyes. Are we sticking oh, to the? Story. What's what's her name? As Esmeralda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, Esmeralda, I wouldn't dream of wasting your time. <laughs> says, Are we sticking to the original plan? And you get to go check out his art. Say so, say that again. I was Sorry. asking. I was asking the guys. Are we going to stick to the original plan? Like we had talked about checking out uh, the guy's art, some of his sculpture. We wanted to see some of his art to see what was depicted in his art, and if that would give us any clues as to uh, hmm? maybe the the trajectory of his mental state. 
Yeah, sure. Missed other things. So I, if we're going to go up to his place, I bet he's got some pieces that he was working on. Right. His most recent stuff, which would probably give well, us even more insight. We have right. a we have a lead, though, right? A lead? What's the lead? A lead. Like we have something to go off. We have something to investigate, right? We got uh, sorry, I got character. We had some place, a farm or something to investigate. A farm. Or sorry, I'm I'm thinking of something else. Sorry. Um, but uh, but what what kind of leagues do we have to go? Well, off? what what's our purpose? Our purpose is to find out really why is he like this. Mm-hmm. So I think the first thing we need to do is go to his place and see what sort of living conditions. Yes. He's in. Yes. Uh, sorry, out of character. That was what I was. That's a league. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the league. Yeah. That's that's. The like the league. Okay. Yeah, he's like, yeah, yes, yeah. We need, we we should uh, search it top to bottom. It has to have something to at least give us uh, right. a place to go to go to next, another path to be followed. We probably also, uh, I, I let's say that we discuss certain things about this when everybody else is out of the room, you know, kind of quietly. But you know, we also yeah, probably like, need kind of, somebody uh, like. We need somebody to do an observation of Harlan. Watch him for a while. Hmm. See if he does anything... Anything that would indicate that Harlan's still there and not just a mindless animal. People People can fake it. People can act, but they can't act consistently for a long, long time. They... They start... Going into old habits, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but if Harlan's gone, then. Well, Robert, since he's not really here, um, you guys hear me? He'll, he'll say, you know. Is that Uh-oh. Jeff? Yeah. Hello. About... Hello. Hello. You're you're okay. you're really modulating, but. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Can you hear us okay? That's okay. That yeah, I can hear you guys great. Oh, cool. I was about to I was about to NPC your character, but good. <laughs> <clears throat> well, we'll try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not okay. terrible. It's not too terrible, no. All right. Theo, uh, I personally think that Harlan is a lost cause. Mm. I mean, we... we I mean, you know, it, it's... Kind of a part of basic human nature not to cannibalize another human being, and he was seen chewing on a little girl's leg. I don't know that any op- more observation of him would be uh, worthwhile. I mean, he's either way. He's that poor guy is. I mean, he's up the river either way. Even listen, if he listen, Solomon, Solomon. Yeah, and I, I look around, make sure nobody. <laughs> I see. Right. Look, we're not really here. To save that guy. Mm. All we're here to do is to write a white paper so that we can put this in the psychological journal and bring prestige to the Good the point. University. Okay, okay. So all, all right. the information that we can gather is important. Uh, whether we can, I don't think that we can help him. The guy's mm. not Yeah, right. he has a friggin' letter. He's not. I take a big bite of whatever's in front of me. Okay. But we also don't want anybody to know that that's the way we feel about it. Right, this. okay. So I will say, um, as a GM, I will say that um, any further um, observations or investigations, or not investigations, but observations of Harlan won't produce anything else. Um, I will say that because you guys passed uh, a lot of uh, your psychology roles while you were there observing okay. Um, you notice that this guy, just like Solomon said, he's gone. Um, and I will say that um, you got the impression that he wasn't faking, that he really believes that he is a canine. Okay. Um, his acts, his manner, it's, it's one thing to fake something like that, you know, just like rough, rough. rough. It's another thing to actually have the actual animal mm-hmm. um, Mannerisms that he was displaying, um, and so yeah, right. 
Guys, so we won't, we won't waste our time on a lot of that. But, but you okay. Can, you can jot that down as part of your um, the, the paper that you're going to write up. Okay. Um, what you've observed of this particular man. Um, so, and, are we... Um, go ahead. I will say, who has the highest biology? Or oh, science? not me. <laughs> natural science or uh, natural world? I have 50 oh. in biology. Okay. Um, roll, roll that. Uh, for me. Natural world or, or biology will work. I have 60 in natural world. So okay. 40. You want me to roll it, Wayne? Huh, I got a 97. Okay. Do, you, do you want me to roll my uh, my natural world, Wayne? Um, you weren't there to um, observe. I there. Yeah. Go ahead. I made it. Uh, I made it just by six points. Okay, that's fine. Um, you know, you noticed um, that, you know, maybe in your you know, you've gone to a zoo, or you've, you've you might have walked a dog or seen dogs in Arkham. You notice that even his body, his posture when he was sitting on his haunches, or you know when he was crawling around, it wasn't like it didn't really look like a man pretending to be a dog. It looked more like his body was starting to get into that rhythm of being, you know, walking on four legs more or less. Mm. Wow. So, like, it was looked more like a dog pretending to be a man. Um, it looked like there was. It seemed like there was maybe a transition going on. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, he, you know, wasn't. He didn't look. You know how like some people might crawl around the floor and, and act like an animal, but they yeah. look out right. of place. You know, you notice that he looks out of place because he's a man doing this. But it was strange that he didn't. It seemed like he was more or less like a dog. He's doing it really, really well. It was like he was, or he became. Did we? Did Hmm. we also observe? uh, Did we also find out that he had no dog? Right. Um. As for um. As far as you know, you didn't ask. I thought that we did ask, didn't we? Um. You asked. You asked Constable Clark, but he he didn't. He didn't know. Think Mm -hmm. so. He didn't know, right? I think to learn anything more about why he snapped. I think that we need to go to uh, his house so we can get some physical evidence. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. 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 I will say, um, give me, um, Tom, give me a, give me a uh, idea roll though. Okay. Oh, two. Oh, very nice. nice. Um, you, you would get the idea or get the, the hunch that he wouldn't have owned the dog because. And if he did own a dog, it would probably be dead mm-hmm. due to the fact that he Neglect. neglected even his own daughter. Well, that's that seems very important because if he were faking, he would have had to have done a great deal of observation of mm-hmm. animal behavior. And in this case, if he didn't have a dog, there's something really weird going on here. He's right. He's reverting to something completely primal. Psychological. It could be atavistic regression, Theo. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's, now, uh, now, because you yeah. got a two, you will also know that if he had a dog um, during his depression, and I mean this has been going on for a good twelve years. During his depression, he wouldn't even think to observe a dog. Right. The only thing right. he would be thinking about is his dead wife, mm-hmm. and every time he thought about that, he would hit the bottle. Yeah. Don't try to soothe them, and then, you know. So, how's breakfast going? Are we almost done? Shall I'm we done. Go? Yeah. My character will probably be pretty much finished by now. All right. It looks like Jeff kind of dropped out. So. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's having too many trouble, too much trouble. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what have you, Jeff? So, um, of course, before you leave, Clementine, you know, um, goes up to um, Robert and asks how his hand is doing. And he, He's like, oh, it's sore, you know, it's kind of, you know, achy right now, but, you know, you patched me up last night pretty well. Um, thank you. And she says, okay, well, if you need any more, you know, assistance or first aid, you know, we've got a, a decent kit here, and I can always patch you up and clean your wounds and rest it and everything like that. Yes, you did. So you guys are heading out. Uh, yep. Yeah, just before we go, though, I want to ask Esmeralda a question. Is there a doctor's office anywhere in town? 
She's in, um in case we need more supplies or something. Um, she says not a doctor per se, not an office, but I mean we, we tend to go out of town if it's a real emergency, but we do have a a, a doctor. I'll, we'll call him because to be honest with you, it wasn't in the <laughs> uh, we'll give him a doctor um Terrence Johnson. Terrence Johnson? Yeah, he actually studied at that that college of yours down there in Arkham. Oh, but he okay. came out here and you know he's making a nice little living for himself out here. There's not that much, you know, I mean with I mean more or less like, you know, he's a human doctor, but he also tends to the animals as well. What do you call those things? Um just a doctor. <laughs> uh, I thought there was a fancy name for for those animal doctors, but a vet? A veterinarian? Oh, yeah, one of those. He, yeah. yeah, so he, you know, he he more or less serves as a veterinarian, but he also can you know, help out us, us mere humans. Okay. Let's go, guys. She, she tells you where it's at. It's it's in town. No, as we, as we step out... As we, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh. Um, as we step out of uh, Esmeral, of, of the Lock, Lockhart? Lockhart's mm-hmm. place, um, I look over at Georgie's car and I say, you're going to drive in that thing or you're going to come in our car? We can fit, we can fit six. Do I really, after hearing the conversations about you driving, want to get in a car with you? <laughs> huh. I don't you know, drive? Theo. You can drive. You want to drive that? We almost went off a cliff on our way here. <laughs> wow. Well, let's see you drive. Let's see you do it. I think we're just going up the street, aren't we? Yeah, uh, we're off the, the uh, rickety it's, it's, it's several. It's a couple of miles. Okay. Well, it's, uh, it's way I, more. I, yeah, huh? It's it's um. You got Look. the directions. You got the directions from um, Constable Clark. Okay. It is uh, west of town. It is about a half mile um, from uh, yeah. So not west. It's east of town. Okay. It's about a half mile south from the Miskatonic River. So, um, okay. you know, he basically gives you those directions. So it's, it's I, not that much of it's not that far of a walk. All right. Well, whoever wants to drive, just don't bang up the car. It's, it's not mine. I can drive. Not a big deal. All right. Give me a drive roll. No, I'm kidding. I can give you a drive roll. I got a 50 on drive. Oh, good. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I only had a 10. <laughs> really? What? The base is 20. Oh, then I only had 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, now I have 50. So. Okay. No, you, you, you guys don't need to uh, do a drive. But awesome. you, you walk out, you, you see an overcast sky. Um, looks like r- more rain is on the way. Um, the streets are still wet from yesterday's rain. But like I said, it wasn't a downpour. It was more of a steady rain. Are they paved? Are they are they paved streets, or are we on dirt road? Um, in town, it's paved um, to a certain degree. Okay. Uh, but when you start getting further out towards the uh, the houses, since they're like more or less like farmhouses, it's yeah. less paved and more dirt. Okay. So it's a reasonably, I mean... The heart of the town is a it's it's relatively uh, small. small, but it's been still you know it's it's not like ho bunk middle of nowhere woods hillbilly style, it's 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 relatively nice in the very heart, but small. Hmm. Okay. Well, what would you say, Wayne? Uh, population one hundred and fifty. Um, it's it's a small town, but um, yeah. I believe I said that the Full population is 833. There's a lot of, like, um, that's, spread that's out. actually pretty big. Yeah, that's a pretty big town. I, I, I lived in a town that was 300, and it was pretty big. Yeah. So there, there are, like, I mean, this is Coldwater Falls. Wow. Uh, this particular part of town is probably about, you know, two or 300 people. Um, max. Okay. There are roads that lead out to other farms. Okay. Um, it's still considered cold waters. Right, just, you know. Okay, right. but it's not like we're in, like I said, we're, it's not like we're in the boondocks. Well, you are in a way, yeah. but yeah. it's 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 totally different from Arkham or oh, Boston. Yeah. Well, so you know, you're you're used to tall buildings and and uh, more people and 
busier streets, and the streets there are more paved um, in Markham than they are here. It's kind of like, you know, they, they don't, like, the sidewalks are paved. You know, you have cobblestone, you have, um, you know, some concrete and everything like that. But when you start getting further and further out, it's it's dirt road. Right. Okay. So, yeah, well, it's, a half, it's a half a mile. It'll take you, I don't know how fast you guys are walking or whatever, but it should take you, like, 20 20 minutes to get there if you're taking the time. To get, uh, we're driving, aren't we? Yeah, we're driving. Okay, so it takes you like a few minutes, minutes to get there. Not even 15. Okay. okay. It's a half a mile, so. Mm -hmm. Like five minutes. Okay. Yeah, five or ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, being like, honestly, I don't even use miles. We use kilometers here in Canada. So it's just like. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we've got to get back to that system. Yeah, I know. It's, like, jarring, hey? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys um, you guys get out there, and you, you find his, his workshop easy enough. Um, and as you approach, you see a small, like, shack house. Um, it's, like, a one-story house. Um, and as you're approaching the, the property, it looks like it's been in disrepair for a while. Okay. Um, there's a uh, yard out back uh, with a high wooden fence surrounding the, the back uh, portion of it. Um, and you guys get to the front of the property. Where you guys so, so there's a house and there's a shed? Well, no, no. I mean, a sh I, I didn't mean sh shed. I meant like shack. It's a, a sh like one-story shack. Okay. Or like a bunkie almost? Or is it like just like straight up like just like a little shack? It's like a little shack. Okay. Maybe like a work 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 shack or yeah, like yeah. A little shack. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's shall we? All right. So, um, you guys walking up towards the property. Tell me exactly what you guys are doing. I'm gonna. Go, I want to circle around back and look at the yard. Okay. I'm gonna go through the shack. Okay. I'll go up to the front door. Yeah, I'm gonna follow Theo. You know, front door seems like the most logical option. All right, so let me go with Solomon first. Okay. Um, give me a spot hidden. Yep. Give me one second. Uh, I made it. Okay. Got yeah, a twenty-one. I have a fifty in spot hidden. Cool, cool. So damn, that's that's uh, a hard road. Not nice. Um, so you you walk around and you see this um, this high wooden fence. I'd say it stands about eight or nine feet. Um, and as you're walking around, uh, you notice that some of the planks are loose towards the backyard. Um, that, that leads on to the backyard. But there doesn't seem to be any sort of uh, entrance besides that little uh, loose board. Okay. Hmm. Came back, sorry. Can I kind of like mess around with the board to see if it's a... Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you can you, you can do that easy enough, and it, it parts away. Um, and there's like a little slit in there, like your what? Look at your size. Yeah, you're 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 you can probably fit through. Hmm. Do I see beyond? Like, is the yard overgrown? Yeah, yeah you, you see the yard. Um, there it is overgrown. You, you do from from your vantage point, you see um, a lot of litter in the back. So, I don't hear any dogs or anything, right? No, there's no dogs. All right, I'll try to squeeze through. What do I need to roll? Um, give me a dexterity roll. Dex, okay, that's a sixty. So let me see. I got a, <laughs> I got a ninety. So I did not <laughs> you, fit you, through you that try space. To, you try to um, move your way in, but you can't seem to fit yourself through. Okay, that's All great. Right. Hooked on a nail. Yeah. Yeah, great. Well. If he would have gotten a little higher than that, he yeah. might have. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys are at the front door. Yeah. So what are you doing? Um. So I try the front door to see if it opens. You try the front door and the door is open. Okay. Well, I I open it up and and just I don't know out of habit. Hello. I don't expect there to be any answer, but. Yeah, and I even and I even say that to Theo. I was like, "What were you expecting?" And I kind of just walk inside. All right. 
Yeah, you, you, you get no reply, of course. I, I, uh, I, I turn to him and I say, I'm expecting Mama Lycanthrope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say, but you were, but, oh wait, where is Robbie? Is he with us? Robbie, Robbie is with you. Okay, well I, 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 I wink at Robbie when I say that because he's been bitten by the, the werewolf. He's, he's yeah. like shaking your head, I mean shaking his head, and he's like, you guys aren't going to live that down, are you? Well, right. we'll... We'll 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 stop we'll stop doing it in a month after the next full moon. Oh, yeah. my funny. And I walk inside and I say, don't don't mess with that shit. My 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 dad and his and his grandpa and his dad, you know, they say that shit's real. Don't mess with that. And I look at <laughs> Robbie and I and I say that shit's real, bro. And I, no, don't mess with that. No, let's go inside. <laughs> All right. Well, did they make you cry when you were a little kid when they told you these stories? <laughs> Grandpa did. Yes. No. Shush. Uh, oh, I meant I, I forget to mention while you guys were having breakfast. Um, Robert, you know, he was he was uh, asking for like his meat um, a little bit on the less uncooked side. Mm-hmm. I mean, less cooked side. Of things. A little rare. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just. Just a little that. pink. Just yeah, a little pink. Just a little pink. Oh yeah, okay. we noticed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just adds right. the fuel so, to our. So you, you <laughs> walk in, <laughs> You walk into uh, his place and you find yourself uh, in a small room. Um, this room looks more or less like a living space. Okay. Um, it's furnished with a bed, a rocking chair. Um, some. Okay, I don't know what that is. The, the, that's the papers down yonder. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you find a multi uh, I mean, multi-purpose uh, table set. Okay. Uh, you see a stack of peach crates uh, laying up next to the fireplace. Um, these crates seem to have papers sticking out of them. It's okay. about four, four or five of them. They're stacked, you know, four or five. Uh, high stuff to keep the uh, fire going. Okay. You do see some some firewood too. Is the is the room pretty much pretty filthy? Yeah, yeah. It's it's dusty. It's dirty. Um, and um, well, I say to the guys, see if you see if there's anything that tells us something about Harlan. Let's look around. I.e. spot hidden. <laughs> give me a spot hidden. Everybody who's looking. Oh, okay. shag, you, trying you, to hold shag, so. What am I doing? I'm looking in uh, all the drawers of the house. Anything that any anything that I can find, I'm, I'm opening. Well, and I'm looking in. There, there are no drawers. Um, you have a multi-purpose. Well, I'll say the multi-purpose uh, table has a few drawers, but there's there's nothing. You see some um, some uh, spit uh, pipe tobacco. Um, so he sm- he smoked. He smoked. Um, but nothing in like any any of the drawers. Some you know just basic debris. Okay. Can I do a spot hidden then? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I I passed. You passed. And oh. I passed. All right. So tell me exactly where you're looking. Well, I don't quite understand the way the room is laid out, but wherever, let's say around his bed it's a, or his it's a pretty mattress. small. It's a pretty small room. So you're looking in his bed. Yeah, around his bed, under his bed. See if there's something okay. there. Well, under you, you find um, a few empty jugs of uh, you know, bottles, whatever. And when you sniff it, you can tell that it's moonshine or some some form of alcohol. Okay. Um, but nothing else on his bed. Just his bed looks unmade. Um, it's kind of filthy. Oh. And you also hear a cat meowing. Yeah, we heard the cat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's my cat who's locked in the room now. I gotta go get him out. But before I do that, uh, uh, let's say that I'm I'm just trying to get a general feel of the room. I'm just kind of scanning it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, I mean, pretty much um, nothing really. Nothing really of an importance here. Like I said, just the the bed. It, it just looks like oh, you know, sort of like a one room shack. Are there other rooms, or is that it? Um, you can look through. Um, when you go into there, there's a small another room um, just adjacent to this one. 
And it's it looks like a sit-in uh, kitchen or eat-in kitchen. Okay. Um, you 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 see some uh, spent cans of uh, uh, beef stew and stuff like that, like canned goods. Um, you also see something. You, you see uh, it also has a sink um, that operates off of a hand pump. Um, and I'll say that if you're you're testing the water, it comes out clean, clean. What I would like to see is if there's anything in the room that might indicate, let's say, cans of spoiled food or whatever, that past three days ago, Harlan was not a dog person, but was in fact in this room fixing his dinner. Yeah. Well, or... like you, you, you see. Um... He has a one of those pot pot belly stoves um, that's operated with a it's like a wood stove, mm -hmm. and on top of it you see like a cast iron skillet that has some caked uh, dry remains of like another type of stew. And you'll I'll say that you'll see like a can that's that's been opened and does it look can, moist yeah. enough that it's only a couple days old? Yeah, I mean it's 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 caked on. It, it looks like it's it's been a couple days. Right. But not like a month, so. right? Right. So, and I and I say it to uh, I say it to George. I'm like, look here. It, it, I I think that Harlan was okay a couple of days ago, so something happened. What do you think? I don't know. We got to keep keep going, but something happened to him in the last couple of days. You guys were saying something about art, right? Yeah, he supposedly is a sculptor. Uh, I haven't seen anything in here. Maybe he's outside somewhere. Maybe it's in. Uh, I don't know. It, it, do you think there's another? There's another place on the property, right? Yeah. So like you're in this um, the, the kitchen area. You see a door that leads out to the backyard. Okay. And the and at this point, I wanted to ask Solomon, what are you doing? Yep. I'm still trying to get through that little narrow space. I really want to get into the backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It didn't, yeah, I, I really want to get into that backyard. So uh, you want me to try again? Yeah, give me give me another. Uh, okay, backstage. let's. I mean, if I if I mess it up this time, I'm just going to go around to the front of the house. But okay, I really, I really wanted to come in the back and just kind of investigate. But let, let's see. Sure. Uh, I made it. I got an 18 this time. All right. So you make it. You make it through. You guys are looking out towards the backyard, and you see Solomon. He looked uh -huh. like he was stuck for a moment. And then he wiggles his way through the little break in the, uh, the uh, fence there. And so now he's in the backyard. Looks to me like Solomon needs to start going on a diet like Chang's doing. So he can <laughs> um, Too much that, whiskey. Now, where's Chang? Didn't Chang say he was going to go uh, check yeah, the shag? Yeah, uh, I'm looking through the shag. Uh, I, like, go up to the shag. Uh, is the shag padlocked or locked or anything? Uh, so the sh uh, shed? Yeah, the shag. There's okay. no shed. There's no shed. In the backyard, though. So let me. Oh, explain. it's in the backyard. Right. Oh, oh okay. So you then I follow the guys like yeah, to the backyard, back. and then I start checking out the shag. Okay. All right. Shane so, walks up to the fence and just like walks through that little. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so which way are you coming through? Did you go through the house or are you going through the back? Uh, I, it's just like. I was just a little confused about yeah. how you were describing it to me because I thought the shag was like right out, like no, no, the, no. Basically, it's in the backyard, the house, which is a, which is a shack. His, I, I described it more or less like a shack, which is like okay. a one-story, you know, house basically. Yeah, yeah like I, I get what you mean. It's like I'm just like looking through it for like any kind of suspicious stuff, you know, like any. There's a seem tag locked or anything. Any what? Is it uh, locked? No, no. No? Oh. No, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, are you coming through the front, like, with Theo and George? or? Yeah, you... I'll be coming through the front with Theo and George. I, okay. I was just confused about the layout of the place. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'd be I'm coming sorry, I mean, I would, have, I would have drawn up a map, but, like, my computer. Yeah, was... that, okay. that probably would have helped. Yeah. All right, so Chang's with us in the house, then. Right. So we're going to go yeah. out the back door. All right, so you guys go out to the back. The back door opens up to a large... We choked yard. This yard resembles a small graveyard um, and has perhaps 
five to six dozen headstones scattered about in various stages of completion. I was expecting statues of people. Mm -hmm. But what does he do? He does gravestones. Mm. Can I roll something for that? Like a cult or something? Like, why would a guy just have, like, gravestones in his backyard? Like, a he carves, carves them. them. He sells them. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Right. <laughs> right. And by, by various stages of completion, it means that you'll see, like, a person's name, their birth date, but not a death date. Now, mm. now, are they simple gravestones, or are some of them actually beautifully sculpted angels or whatever? Um, these look like just basic... Basic uh, slabs. Yeah, okay. basic slabs. Mm, okay. Mm. Do, you like, do, do they look like they were the ones that were worked on uh, like just a few days ago, or are um, they... You, when you look at these things, um, there are a few that look new like they were worked on um, pretty recently. Some of them look pretty old, like um, they've been here for a while, several months. Um, okay. They've been rained on. and Right, right. Yeah. Are you guys doing anything else? By, by your... I'm more curious about that shag. Yeah, are we... Yeah, I, and I look over at, you know, Chang and Theo and say, do you think this is what he was making? Is this what they were saying he was doing? I guess. Are any of them distinct in any kind of way that would be a natural way? Or are they uh, all just, I mean, basic headstones? They're, right now they're just basic headstones. But give me, I want everybody to give me a spot hidden. Okay, so I'll be having it at 25%. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to roll my two dice. I'm going to roll my black dice. Barely um, made it. I... I barely oh. went over. Can I spend some luck? Sure you can. I got a 28, which is not half. I got a 95. I failed. <laughs> okay. So I'm you're, going to so spend Chang, four points of luck. Okay. So Chang is, like, looking around, and he's more interested in this shed, and I'll get to the shed. <laughs> in a, in a quick okay. Um, but you guys, as you're, you're going around and you're looking at some of these gravestones, and, like, some of them just, they look like basic plain... Uh, Stone gravestones. However, because you guys uh, passed your your spot hidden, you see an image that's carved on the base of a few of those stones, and these these tend to be the newer ones. So the newer ones um, are kind of laying. You know, some of them are laying flat on the ground. Some of them are sort of lay, leaning up against the fence. Um, but you you happen to see this. A strange symbol carved uh, beneath there, and basically in this particular symbol, um, you basically see a symbol that's about three, three or four inches. It's a circle with a triangle imposed above it, and there's a eye in the middle of that particular uh, triangle. And you see these weird sort of branches coming out of the triangle and leading outside of the the uh, circle. Hmm. Who were these particular gravestones um, for? Were they just being carved just in case? Were they already like... Yeah, they're kind of like carved just in case. Okay, okay. Uh... The names. Is there any pattern on the names? No, like just, first... uh, it looks like just random names. I guess people who would have commissioned for, you know, a grave or something like that, gravestone, just to have it in place just as they die. Wayne, can uh, we do a can we do a rubbing of that symbol using the uh, paper and pencils that Theo bought? Can we do a rubbing? Yeah. I'll say that you guys can do that, and you guys do it. Okay. All right. Um. I'm Wayne, just gonna draw the symbol. <laughs> uh, yeah, Wayne, are the are the names of any significance to us or no? No. Okay. No. Besides, you guys don't know any of the uh, well, the people here. No, you just only know a few. Okay. Um. So I guess we should find out what's in that shed then. All right. Everyone yeah. wants to go to the shed. Let's go to the shed. All right. So you guys go into the shed. 
I'm not going to the shit. Okay. That's Chang's thing. Yep. Yeah. Right, of course. He's so, obsessed with the shed. I'm going to the house. You're going back? Okay, because you haven't been in the house. Okay. Exactly, right. All right, so I'll let you go to the house. I'll describe what's in the shed, and then I'll come back to you in the house. That's cool. All right. So you guys uh, head over to the shed, and it's an op- it looks like more or less like an open workshop type of a place. Um, you see an assortment of um, sculpting tools and chisels. Uh, you have your standard safety goggles and aprons and gloves and stuff like that that, that are hanging on the peg in the shed. The um, shed seems to be wired for electricity and has a single bulb <laughs> taped down as well as uh, several outlets for his power tools like a diamond-tipped drill um, and a wheel grinder. Um, you also see a tabletop radio set. Um, the place looks, I'm not going to say it looks cleaner. Well, I mean, it looks cleaner than the house, but it's, it still has uh, debris there, like chipped uh, stone and everything like that. Um, give me a spot hidden. Watch me. Well, first, before, 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 before I even do that, let me ask you what you guys are doing before I even ask for a spot hidden. Well, I'm actually standing just outside the shed looking back at, uh, at Solomon thinking, the hell is he doing? <laughs> uh, I pay no mind to whatever these guys are doing, and I immediately go in, and I've just got this 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 shit eating grin on my face because I've never been outside of Arkham. This is fascinating to me. You know, I've always wanted to go on a real like adventure, and this is a real adventure. So I'm just going a headstrong into it. I'm a dumb kid, so. Uh, so I just go in and I'm taking everything in. You know, I, I'm looking at every single wall, looking at everything that's on every single wall. Okay, so you know, you, trying to commit it to memory. You 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 basically see uh, what I described. Um, you have, you know, his tools hanging up. You have um, some pieces that he's been working on um, or he had worked on, um, and some of them are pretty pretty damn beautiful. Um, you see some statuaries um, that um, I'll say that. He carved maybe, you know, the face of the statue, and it has some, you know, tortured looks or some saddened looks or something like that, like angels weeping down. It isn't fully complete, but you could tell that this man was definitely skilled at what he was doing mm-hmm. and that it would have been a, a piece of art had he finished it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is there anything in the room? You also, you also see, you know, a, a workbench and everything like that. Yeah, and I, and I, and when I uh, can I go to the workbench and is there anything on the workbench like a covered piece or one that's shoved underneath or anything like that? Give me a spot hidden. Okay. Do uh, I get to do something here because uh like I'm probably the first guy to get in there. I'm just like scanning the entire place top to bottom like the fuck is I been up to? You got an eleven. <laughs> yeah. Um, got an 11. Okay. Um. Oh, you pass. Ken, give me give me a spot hidden roll as well. Okay. Me, I hope my black dice work this time. Eighty nine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're 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 taking in you're taking in the sights. You're looking at some of this. You know, you're really drawn to the the one statue that isn't complete. And you're like, wow, this, you yeah. know, you haven't seen anything like it. Um, if only it was an Asura and had three pairs of arms, it would be even cooler. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yes, George, you got an eleven. I got an eleven. Yeah. Okay. So as you're, you know, looking through his workbench, you happen to um, notice that there is a large portfolio um, that's tucked away um, within the, the the workbench. This is okay. like sort of a home a homemade workbench uh, that somebody made for him. Is it like in a is it would we call this like a hidden compartment, or is it just like a drawer? It was like a drawer, but it was like hidden in the back of the drawer. Okay. So, so he wanted to keep it secret. He wanted to keep it hidden. Yeah. I, I mean, well, who knows? Okay. Uh, so yeah, I pull it out and then, uh, and I flip it to the. Let's not go through the second page. Let's go to the, let's go to the third page. Let's go to the third page. First and second are for wimps, for losers. 
Okay, you're, you're flipping through this book, and you see um, it's, it, it basically looks like a style guide for uh, tombstones. Um, you see uh, sketches of tombstones, and some of those sketches are very beautiful as well. Um, mm -hmm. There are um, sketches of uh, mausoleums, like he's actually arted out how a mausoleum would look. Um, okay. And and it it's very detailed. It's something that you probably would have seen in maybe an archaeology book or something like that if you you've ever bothered like thumbing through something like that. Yeah, um, you know mausoleums or you know, tombs and stuff like that. Definitely, I would have penned through that. Um, though you know th that doesn't really appeal to our investigation. Right. Uh, I don't think. So, no, and you, you, you know, see those things everywhere in New England. So right, right. Um, you're, you're, you're paging through this book, and um, you know you notice like him having handwritten notes and everything like that on each page or whatever. And as you get somewhere towards the middle, you see a small page that looks at, to have been like torn off from like a sketchbook. And on that page, you see the same symbol that you guys rubbed mm -hmm. off, but there's no other notes or anything else written on it. It's just that particular symbol or emblem. The hmm. same, sorry, I care, like the same one that we they saw in the tombstone? Yes. Okay. And I'm assuming that the characters are like relaying this to me or I'm like kind of looking over their shoulder and looking at this. Well, yeah, I turn, you know, because I'm fully inside. I just turn it and look, I look at you guys and I turn it and say, it's the same symbol that we're seeing on uh uh, on the on the tombstones, maybe this, and I put my finger on it, has something to do with Tim going nutty. They, and I'm like, dude, they they put symbols on all tombstones. It depends on what religion or what club they belong to, or they're, if they're Freemasons or if they're. A symbol means a lot more than just what it appears to be. Yeah, but it doesn't drive people crazy. All right, well, I'll hold on, you two, okay? I don't need any spiritual bullshit, and I don't need your cynic <laughs> bullshit, right? The symbol just appears on these tombstones. They're recent, right? There's got to be some connection, right? Yeah, it's probably yeah. a club. Okay, so we look for a club. Yeah, well, Even we if there is a club, club, that's some kind of physical evidence to go off of now. We got something. Yeah, it's, well, it's something. It's a lead. All right. Um, who's, who's all in this shack? I guess everybody except for uh, Solomon. Solomon. Right. All right. Let me let me quickly go to Solomon, and then um, right. I'll come back to you guys. So Solomon, Hi. you walk in through the kitchen. Um, you notice um, pretty much what I told these other guys. You know, it's a eating kitchen. You you notice that he must have made something to eat a few days ago. There's uh, what looks like the remains of a stew or something like that in an iron skillet. Um. I'll say that you walk into the living room or the living space, and again, it's not tidy at all. It's it's pretty dirty. You see uh, a few of the bottles that Theo pulled out and placed on a bed. Um, you also notice a you know crate of um, what looks like the, looks like papers or something like that um, sitting up by the fireplace, um, and that's pretty much it. So, did the guys when they were in here? Did they? Uh, toss the place? Like, did they thoroughly search it? Yeah, well, to to a certain degree, like, um, Theo looked under the bed. Um, again, there was nothing really of note or import. Okay. Okay. In the kitchen, are there any knives in the kitchen? Um, yeah, there's like, but not, not knives in the way you would think. Like, like, a, um, like a butcher knife or a cleaver? Like, like a cleaver, you know, um, just kitchen kitchen utensils, more or less. But nothing like sharp. Well, they're sharp enough to cut through, you know, bone or something like that if you, you're preparing a meal. But nothing like you would use. You could use it as a weapon, but not like weapon grade. Okay, I want to take a knife. Okay. Uh, and like tuck it into my coat jacket. All right. And then uh, I'll go. I'll go join the guys in the shed. Okay. So um, you could just put that on your character sheet. Uh, yep. Not you. Uh, do you need stats for it? Nope, not at all. Okay. Good. Right. Yep. Cool. 
You know, right. uh, either way, we'll deal with it when it comes up, so... All right. Um, so you head back out to the shed with everybody else? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I want everybody to give me a spot hidden. Watch me fail this royally again. Just watch this. I'm going to use different dice here, okay? I made it. I did not this time. Hi, baby. Thanks, sweetie. Shit, my one failed. <laughs> I got a seventy. I got seventy nine. <laughs> this is like the third critical failure, like just epic failure in a row here. Jay, wow. you need to meditate more oh. often. <laughs> How about you, for you? Um... Okay, sorry to interrupt, though. Go. <laughs> what did you get, George? I made Madden. I did not make it. Oh. I succeeded. Okay. Well, one one person succeeded. That that's good enough. So I'll say that everybody's fascinated by the book, and you know, you you see the statuary half complete, or partially complete. Um, but as you're walking, you notice that there's a. Um, and you got an eleven, right? Yep, eleven out of uh, yeah. I need a fifty. So. Yeah. That's a decent roll. So you notice that there is a section of uh, floorboard that is a bit discolored. Um, it's not as worn as um, the rest of the floor. And it's free of some of the debris that's on the, the, uh, on the floor. And as you look closer to it, uh, closer at it, you, it appears to be a loose board. Okay. I'm going to point it out to the guys and uh, just basically say, hey, what do you think? Should we, you know... Go for it. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll go. go. Yeah. Alright, so you pull you pull the board aside and um, you, you, in closer examination, you find a small burlap bag and as you pick it up, it starts to clink a little bit. It's about the size of a large grapefruit. It starts to clink? Clink, yeah. Hmm. Clink. Like there's money inside of it? Like yeah. Uh... Treasure. You found treasure. I'm going to hand it to Theo. Aww. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. We're All right, well, that, that, uh... that may get all finders keepers sort of thing. but Yeah, well, you do the honors, yeah. sir. All right, I open up the... It's a bag, you say? Yeah. I open up the bag and look inside. All right. So you see, when you open up the bag, you see um, several dozen bits of miscellaneous jewelry, like rings and watches and necklaces. Um, jewelry. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You mm. also find um, small bits of jagged gold mm. and so. Okay. Uh, the workbench. Can I like? Dump this stuff out onto the workbench so we can sure get a better can. look at it. Sure you can. Mm. All right, that's what I'm gonna do. All right. And all of a sudden, I, I say to the guys, I say, "What crosses my mind at this moment is grave robbing." Yeah, me too. Yeah, there's something going on here. I mean, or wait a second. Wait a second. Instead of us being pessimists and thinking the worst of this guy, maybe this is just payment that people have given him for gravestones. What What would he do with jewelry that would that it would be payment? Well, I mean, you can't spend it. You could take it in, right? Sell it, pawn it. And yes, yet it's all well, why would he be hiding his shed like this? If he well, just wanted to go get the money, he'd just pawn it off. He wouldn't keep it in a burlap sack under his shack like that. Well, I, actually, to be fair, daughter. actually, to be fair, let's ask Wayne. Um, yeah. Is is that is that what it looks like? A pile of jewelry, not like his wife's jewelry. Right. It looks like a pile of jewelry. Uh, but give me a medicine roll or an idea roll. Okay. Ooh, go everyone or? Roll yeah. Here. Every, every, everyone who's there. <sighs> Like, see how bad we get messages. Um, my idea is... Where's idea? Uh, idea? It's up at the top. Uh, it's the same as um, 
intelligence. intelligence. Oh, okay. I'll do that. I'll roll that. Um, I made it. Oh, oh 96! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, why don't you roll with the dice on, no the, on the Google Hangouts? I don't know how to. I'd oh. rather you roll physical dice. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't have the, the overlay up, so... Okay. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, I made um, it. I mean, 25. I'm less than half. I'm almost, almost okay. by a fifth, but... So, the small pieces of gold and silver, the jagged pieces, um, the closer you, you look at it and the closer you examine it, um, they start to look more or less like teeth fillings. Yeah. Teeth so fillings. Oh. Okay, grave robber. Yeah. Either that or he's a Noxy. Now, I want you guys to give me a sanity roll. Uh, okay. I don't think there were any Nazis yet. Not yet. They were the real society. Yeah, the real society. The yeah. real society. I. Okay, oh, I made it. I got a nine. Oh. I made it. Twenty-one. I failed. Uh, you failed. <laughs> I failed by ten. Uh. You, you take uh. Okay. You, you take only two two points. Two. Of, okay. And it kind of would make sense for you because since you're you're a Buddhist. You would think that you know when a person's dead, that they should be left in peace more or less. And apparently, this guy has disturbed their greeds to take gold from their teeth more or less. Well, I mean, we think that the body should be burned because it helps this like karma leave the whole. Right. Um, yeah. Hmm. So, kind of like so, so, so you take two points of sanity, and that's kind okay. of on. So, so I have guys, the eight left. Yeah. Yeah. Shang, uh, I Saying I dig your whole Buddhist thing, but I'm gonna suggest that we split this stuff up amongst ourselves and take it. <laughs> I will have no part in that. Hmm. It's not gonna. It's not gonna do anyone any good. We found it, and uh, we're students. So if this whole thing goes south, we may actually lose our. Grants. My character you know. is just like uh, I, I mean, <clears throat> he's like just I'm gonna look the other way for this. Well, can I can he's I make a suggestion? Because there's something going on here, and there's more important things. So my character is really just gonna look the other way in this. Maybe I'm, maybe I can make a suggestion. Of course. Okay. Um, there's probably no way to identify who these things belong to. And they're probably buried in the ground. Right. I would suggest we turn this in to the constable, and if nothing comes of the investigation, then it should be ours. I agree. You know, after two weeks or something right. like that. And that way it's legitimately... Although I... The whole tooth-filling thing is disgusting. Ah, it all spins there, sir. Right? It all spins. It's pretty Tom. horrific. Tom, the other Tom. Yeah. Your mic is... Okay. Yeah, I know. It was off. Uh, it's a good thing, though, that we found all this, though, because... Now we know something we... more. Well, not only that, but there has to be a pawn shop in town. He had to have gone somewhere. Maybe they know more. No, mm. maybe there's not, and that's why he had it, had it all here, because he needs to right. wait until he can go all the right. way to Boston or something. Right. Well, right. we don't I know. No, I mean, something. I'll, I'll say this. Um, give me an idea roll. Okay. Everyone? Ooh. Everyone? Sure. Okay. okay. Let's see how badly I messed this roll up this time. Mm. Watch 21. this. Watch me roll half. Half. an eight. I made it. Okay. Dude, Dude, Tom, you are just all over there. Finally, I made my first roll of the game. Cool, cool. I don't know. It loves me. Now that you've said that, it'll probably give me 96s from now oh, on. No, I'm sorry, Tom. <laughs> don't want to do that. Um, basically, I would say that you guys noticed when you guys walked in, uh, drove in to town, um, and I'll say that you know this is a brand new site for you guys since you, you know, some of you haven't been out of Arkham, some of you were just born and raised in that city, um, so you guys take in all the sites, you look at all the stores and storefronts, and as you guys remember, there was no pawn shop. Um, yeah. The closest thing that you could 
think that might be a pawn shot would have been Phil's uh, tools cool and tackle. Right. So Theo's probably right that it's uh, he was waiting to take it to a city. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Hmm. Is there anything else you guys are going to do here? Have we completely searched the shed? Yeah, I'll, I'll say that um, after that, you, you haven't really found anything else. There's there's uh, one more thing I'd like to do. Sure. Okay. I want to go back in the house. Mm-hmm. And there's something odd. I I now that I'm I'm getting more of a feel for this guy. I want to check like the potbelly stove mm. and see if there's anything that he's burnt or if there's anything in those crates with the papers. So that would be a good idea, actually. All right. So you goes you guys go well, you go back into the house. Everybody else following or you guys? Well, yeah, I follow. I'm thinking that's a good idea, so I'm gonna go follow him with this. Are we bringing this stuff with us or leaving it here? The ju- we're no, taking it. I Let's, think we should go collect it up as some kind of evidence, at least, so that right. it has to go I, I off. think we should turn it into the constable, but mm-hmm. with the provision that if nobody claims it, we want it's it. Ours. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you Two can weeks. keep it. I'll look the other way for it. I mean, yeah. Although I don't entirely like it as my character, I mean, if you want to take it, I'll look the other way because there's more important things. Of course, <laughs> Shane, but look, look. Uh, if if we get it and we cash it in, we'll just give you a share of the cash. You don't ever have to touch it or right. know where it came from. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. But let's see what's in those papers. Okay, so you go yeah. and you check out the pot belly stove, and it's just you know just bent wood, ashes um, and okay. ashes, and things like that. Um, nothing that seems to have been burnt, like any uh, documents or papers. If that's what okay. you're looking for. Um, um, or uh, well, you know, I mean, maybe some so a few bones, like chicken bones, or okay, you know, um, something like that. But you know, nothing out of the ordinary okay. there. Um, when you check out the crates, you basically see a bunch of receipts. Um, you see some charcoal uh, and pencil drawings or whatever. Um, a lot of it has the recognizable Christian subjects like Jesus, Mary, some of the angels. Um, there are some things that are labeled as uh, saints and things like that. Um, but yeah, just pretty much him doodling or just receipts from uh, prior works that he's done. Um, these receipts go from uh, 1902 to 1918. Um, and I'll say that you guys know that around 1918 his wife had passed away. Uh. So it seems like after that he hasn't gotten any sort of commissions. And um None of this deals with any tombstones or anything like this. This is just his actual sculpting, is his, his work of art. Hmm. So I'll say that um, you guys get the general sense that this is the receipts that he kept just for that. And because it stopped at a particular point in time around his wife's uh, death, um, that he hasn't gotten any sort of outside work. So... We're finding evidence that he did sculpture, but not tombstones. Right. Mm. That's why I asked if the tombstones' names were yeah. were important, because you know, why would he? Because I because I distinctly remember the conversation saying sculptures. Mm-hmm. Sculpting mm-hmm. isn't making tombstones. Sculpting is sculpting. Tombstones mm-hmm. is chiseling. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, true. Not good. Different art. Yeah. George, give, give me one. Uh, give you what? Uh, idea roll. Idea roll? Gotcha. Uh, 54, passed. You get the um, you get the impression that chiseling tombstones doesn't take a whole lot of work. I mean, it takes work. I mean, you and I would probably be like, oh, you know, this is hard work, but for a sculptor of that magnitude, it's pretty easy. And it's something that you just didn't have to put a lot of thought or time into. Um, just get the names right and get the dates right, more or less. So you, you look at it as, because of his drinking habit, and he just needed something to supply his his habit, he would just take a, a job uh, carving this out. Nothing too sophisticated. Yeah. But that still doesn't... To me, it's still just... It's, it's a weird that 
that that we're seeing all this grave stuff, but no sculptures, no art. Right. Um, that's weird to me. Hmm. What? I, I, I'm going to say to uh, George, why don't you write down some of the names on those tombstones and let's make sure that, like, they're not missing from the graveyard. That's what I was, yeah, I was wondering that. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll write them down. Can, can hmm. I, Wayne? Yes, yes, and I'll, you, you'll have mission. No, you can't write them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. literally, write the, literally write them down. Right. Uh, yeah, we've got all of our. We've all got notebooks and pe- pencils, so. Yeah. Uh, so do I just write it down, like yeah. I just have now? Yeah. Uh, is there any name that sticks out to me? No, no. Um, nothing. I mean, again, you don't know people here in this this mm-hmm. town. Okay. So, yeah. And Wayne, before we leave this this area, um, we found no evidence whatsoever of the little girl, right? No right. shoes, no ribbons, not not even a lock of hair. Right. right. Okay. So, yeah, you, you found nothing like that. And there's no signs of struggle either. It just wow. looks like he was cooking and and and, and right. something okay. happened and he left. Right. Are any of the uh, names on the tombstones like girls' names or like women's names, or is it all like? Uh, dudes? It's a mixture of uh, male and female names. Okay. So How many are really there? Have no way of knowing. Um, like I, I, as I say, there's about five to six dozen um, scattered around in the backyard. Um, okay. And you'll, I'll say there's about a dozen new ones. Um, From the dates, are any of them children? Ooh. Born dead, born death. I'll, I'll, I'll say there's a few children here and there. Okay. Oh, man, that's just horrible. <laughs> um, we didn't, we didn't um, any digging tools, though, did we? We didn't find any pickaxes, shovels. No, no just just uh, just his work work tools. Maybe it's he just... had a mm. maybe he had a stash nearby the graveyard. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Now the graveyard is all the way on the other side, right? It's west. We went right. east. Right. Um, what do you guys think? Well, what do you think we should do next? Let's go to the graveyard. Yeah, the graveyard. I was thinking about that too. I think we should do that first, and then go to the constable. Yeah. Let's see if there's any evidence that graves have been dug up recently, or. I also want to check out his wife's grave. Okay. okay. That would be a good idea too. Now that I think about it, though, wouldn't grave robbing be reported to the constable? I mean, unless he's like really good at what he does, he the 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 caretaker of the of the graveyard would see the fresh dirt. Mm. Yes, there, but it's also we possible ask that the, the constable. Like, con- hey, yeah, yeah. Like we we should check these graves because we think there's something up with them. Well, you know, the, I mean, I'm sure he'll give us permission. I mean, the well, constable ahead, the constable may know, and it's just not. He had no reason to explain to us that. Oh yeah, there were some graves that were wrong. Right. He he doesn't right. know to put two and two together. But that's what I'm saying. Maybe yeah. now he has a reason, and mm-hmm. he does know the people whose graves were dug up, and we can go check. Yeah, we can talk. We should talk to the constable if we can yeah. find him. Yeah, I mean, let's hurt. wait until after the graveyard, though, because okay. he's doing his thing. Remember, he may not be there. Well, are we done here? Shall we pile in the car and go? Let's pile right. in the car and go. I, yeah. Before you guys leave, I need you guys to do uh, a listen roll. Okay. okay. Listen. What's that? Just twenty-five base. Yeah. If if you don't have it, uh, it'll be. Oh, base. Okay. I was thinking. Five. All right. 34 passed. Pass those. I don't know where. I got a, oh, I got a 28. I failed it by three. Okay. I, so I failed it. Something. I failed it, Wayne. Okay. Um, so, Eric, you know you can use your luck roll. You know you can use luck. Okay, to... yeah. I want to use that luck right now. How right. does that work? It's 2d6? No, 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 no. 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 You would just pretty much um, spend the points in order for you to make the roll. So okay, so... You lower your luck by three. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You haven't rolled your luck yet. Have yeah, you? I haven't rolled my luck. What do I roll for my luck? Just it's two dice. Six, two dice six plus six. Okay, so and times five. I got ten plus six, so sixteen. Times, times five. five. Times so five. Eighty. Eighty. 
wow, that's a nice amount of luck. Yeah, I know. I got really lucky. Like, the one time, the one time I'm not rolling D100s, I get, like, a good roll. <laughs> so so put 80 points, and then you're you're going to spend three of those points. Yeah, so you're down to 77. So let me go luck, 80 points. Uh, and then I'm spending three, so I'll be at 87? 70. 77. 77, okay. 77. Oh, so who made it? That failed. I failed. You failed, you failed. Tom? Oh, uh, I passed. Okay, so as you guys are getting ready to go, you hear um, some heavy footsteps approaching the shack. And it's approaching pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, so me. I alert... Yeah, I alert everybody. Yeah, I'm like, shut up, guys. I hear something. Mm -hmm. Alright, so a few minutes later, not minutes, but a few moments later, you see Deputy Pitts actually arrive at the, the back door. Well, not the back door, the uh, front door. Who? Andy? De Deputy, Deputy Pitts. Okay. You haven't met him yet. Andy Arch Pitts? Yeah, Andy. Andy. And he, he says, ah, ah, There you are. Jeez Louise, you folks gave me a scare. Constable told me to, that you might be up here, and I might be able to find you if you weren't at the Luckhart's place. You boys better come quick. Um... There's something going on down at the, the jailhouse. All Search right. oh, the rest of that God. girl. Come on, quick. I see that you got your car out there. Let's hop on in there and get there quick. What's going on? Oh, man. They, they found the girl, and they're, they're out front. And they, let's just go. Let's, let's, All let's right, go. let's go. Oh. Yes, let's go. Let me we there five minutes. We're not going to stop them from, from lynching this guy. Well, that's the sheriff's job, not ours. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're just college okay. students. Right. I am the good boogist, and I cannot let somebody be lynched. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll back I'll, you up, Jing. I love I'll, it. Okay. I'll step to the side of that. I'll let you do that. I got your back, Jing. Yes. All right. <laughs> but let's go anyways. The good yeah, boogist. Okay. I love it. All right. So um, Deputy Pitts or Andy um, hops in a car with you, and you guys head down to the center of town. When you get there, you find an angry mob out front clogging the uh, sidewalk of the constable's office. Uh, I'd say it's about 50 to 60 men, and they're pretty much yelling um, and screaming at the constable. The constable is up there with a man who's he's a tall, slender man, gray hair. He's wearing all black, um, but he has what looks to be a priest collar around his neck. Mm -hmm. And um, as you pull up um, front, you, you know, you hear a whole bunch of yelling and, and carrying on. And a man comes out and he says, I'll string him up myself. If you ain't got the guts to do it yourself, you yelly belly bastard. Mm. And um, the man seems to be the leader of this crowd. Mm. Um, this man is built, he's pretty built. Um, uh, you can tell that he's uh, kind of a weathered man and he has a. Uh, Weathered, strained look on his hair. He's, I mean, on his face. He's got uh, black hair, as you can tell, but uh, there's a bit of gray peppered through it. And um, you hear Clark, uh, Constable Clark, say, "Now I'm not kidding. Now you folks elected me to keep the peace for four terms running, and that's what I intend to do. Go home now. Now get, get." And as you can see, the the crowd refuses to. Uh, be swayed by his words, uh, and they refuse to disperse. And another man yells from the crowd, How can you protect that monster in there? You see what he done to little Bethany? We here to end him now. Aren't we, boys? And you hear a roar of approval in the crowd, and the men start pressing closer and closer to Constable Clark. And you hear another man, uh, and his, his voice rings clear above the crowd. The man has a strong uh, accent. Uh, it's a French accent. And to tell you guys, I can't do a French accent for shit, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> but he says, quiet down, everyone. 
This man will have his day of judgment. But it will not be today, and it will not be by your hands. He's a man, same as you, same as me. The crowd seems to quiet down a little bit as, uh, as, as the man who came out and started this whole thing comes up front. And he starts taking a few steps towards Father, uh, well, the towards father the and, and the uh, constable. He says, that's no man in there. I was with the group out there in the woods that just found my little girl. My little girl, my, my beautiful baby. That mm. bastard in there, he tore her to shreds. My baby girl. Mm. I'm going to tear this bastard to shreds. Now get out of my way. Mm. And then he turns to, you see that he, he's he got this angry face on him, and he turns to the father, the, the priest, and his face softens just a tad bit. He says, my father, I'm a God-fearing man most Sundays, but right now, I don't see no other choice but an eye for an eye. Now take a step back. Can the priest, we interject? Oh, the priest, hold on. Uh, the priest seems to hold his ground, and as the crowd starts to press even closer, you see that Constable Clark puts his hands to his revolver. He holds his hand, other hand up high in, in a sign of warning. And the man seems to take a stand, a stand uh, a step back after seeing the stance. And he raises, uh, Clark, Clark raises his voice to the crowd and says, Now, let's get this straight once and for all. We don't know what happened to old Harlan in there. You knew him just as well as I did, Jake. And he's like looking at the man who, who was uh, talking to him before, yelling at him before. He says, You know that he's been harmless all these years. Ain't nobody going to lay a finger on him until we figure this whole mess out. Mm -hmm. And to help with that, and he happens to look over, and he sees you guys um, as you guys have pulled up, and he sees Andy, and he sees you guys, and he says, These gentlemen over here, these are some special investigators from Arkham. They're here to go ahead and figure out all this mess. You hear another man out of the crowd saying, well, How are y'all supposed to do that? You hear the, the, the crowd sort of uh, grumble at the same question, kind of saying, yeah, how, how are these folks going to, they're outsiders, they don't even know what happened here. He's, so uh, Andy turns to you guys, he says, um, I think you guys better go up there and do some explaining before this gets any uglier. I go up to the guy who uh, said, like, the whole eye for an eye thing, and mm -hmm. I'm just like, going to walk up, I'm just going to be like, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Oh, you're going to get shot. Nice. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. Give me a persuade roll. Uh, persuasion. Uh, give me a second here. I want to see what I got. Persuade, I got it. 60. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> this is what I'm at. This is my skill. <laughs> I got it, 90. I got a 90! <laughs> yep, he's gonna get shot. Spend 30. God damn it. All right. No, no! Chang, just spend 30 luck points. Yeah. Okay, I'll spend 30 luck points. Yeah, you have 77 luck points. That's perfect. I don't want to get shot here. So you're gonna spend the luck? Yeah, I'll spend 30 luck, so I'll have. Uh, this is your moment, Chang. This is it. Oh my god. All right, so at first, you know, he hears that, and he's like, what is this hog wall that this man is talking about? <laughs> but, he, he, but you see that he, he's like, he has, your, I mean, you have his attention, or he has your attention. Mm -hmm. So he's like, what are you talking about? An eye for an eye blind? What, do you, what is this? Those, those folks from, from Arkham with, their, with their, their book learning. What are you talking about, boy? Can I, hey, Wayne, can I back him up with some fast talk? Ah, uh, go ahead. Let's see. My fast talk skill is 45. All right. Give me a yeah, roll. I'm going to get up there. I'm sorry? I'm, go, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. I'm going to get up there, and I want to, I, wanna, uh, I don't know. I, I know barely anything about the Bible. My character does it oh. anyway. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up there, and I'm going to start, like, quoting scriptures, but I'm doing it really incorrectly. Like, I'm like, you know. <laughs> In Thomas 1, verse 6 through 9, 
Jesus says, and I, I'm trying to convince them that in the end, God will will pass judgment on this man, and that but if they act uh, rashly, the, what they're going to end up doing is actually becoming the same types of savages that he may be. You, you understand what I'm saying? All right, give me a roll. All right, I'll probably fail it, but anyway. <laughs> yep, I fell, but I only fell by so I fell by uh, five, six, six points. So I'm going to spend seven luck points. Okay. And my luck is uh, six. six will get get you there. Yeah, my luck is seventy. So I'm going to drop it down to a sixty. You said six will get sixty four. So I'm going to spend six luck points so I can make my roll. Okay. Try to try to fast talk the crowd and try I'm to fast talking. And um, I'll say that the rest of you, you're, you're, you're standing in front of Constable Clark and um, the priest. And you, you other guys are probably on street level. You're looking at, at him doing his thing. The priest kind of, like, frowns a bit. Like, wait, that's not how the scripture goes. But he keeps quiet. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and Thomas. So the, men, the men are, like, <laughs> thinking about it. And they, they look at the priest. And they do respect him. Um, and they, 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 they're like, yeah, this man has, you know, okay, I, I, I get it. And so the men are starting to disperse a bit. Um, anybody else want to say or do anything? Uh, sure. I'm just going to be like, you have uh, you've lost your daughter. You have every right to be angry. Hmm. But what does killing him do? Does that make you feel better? Oh. It oh, it we have found gold on his his property. Higging. Uh, this is uh, not no. the last. This is not the last. Gold. If you really care, you would want to get to the bottom of this. What are you, what are you talking about, gold? Oh no. And I slowly edge off the stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone takes a Rangers step back. <laughs> so g give me give me a persuasion roll. Me? This, yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, I don't want to spend any more luck. 44, I made it. All right. So the men are like, gold, what are you talking about? Um, but some of them are like, well, they're here with the constable. He says something about some gold or something. They're going to get down to the bottom of this. Come on, and, you know, you hear hear the guy who who's like, yeah, let's, you know, you know, he asked you guys how you, you're supposed to handle this whole situation. He seems to be a persuasive guy, um, and he says, you know what? Let these guys do what they're gonna do. We can always string them up later if if these guys fail to come up with anything. But I'll tell you okay. what. He turns he turns he turns to you, Chang. He says, I'll tell you what, boy, if you don't have this thing figured out in a day. I don't care about eyes and eyes going blind and all this other nonsense you've been spewing. We're going to have our, our justice. We're going to have our own justice. And and the guys are like, yeah, 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 we're going to have, yeah. All right, uh, let's go down to the diner and have uh, some coffee. Yeah, we can have some coffee with some Irish cream. Sure. And they all head out. Towards the uh, the diner. Oh, that and, was awesome. And the man, <laughs> and the man who who's uh, who's at the head of the, this whole thing is still standing there, and he's looking at all of you. He's giving you guys these dirty looks, and he says, "Constable, you heard them. You've got a day. I don't care who you are. I know we've gone back, but if you you don't have this fixed." As soon as possible, we're gonna fix it. That would be necessary. And then, and then he he heads off um, down towards the uh, diner as well. Okay. And so, the constable he, he takes his hand off of his revolver. He lets out a deep breath. He says, "Whew! Wow! Why don't you boys come on in? That was a close yes. one." So you guys enter into the um, the constable's office, and, and he looks at George. He says, "Who might this one be?" Oh, this is George uh, 
Uh, Vol- Volkov? Volkov. Is that your last name, Volkov? That's my last name, Russian. Yeah. I didn't pick it. Yeah. Uh, this is Georgie Rolf uh, Volkov. He's uh, he's a, a student at the university. Also, he was supposed to be here yesterday, but he he was late. I had plans. Mm. I, I shake his I, hand. He had two plans. Oh, he's just nice nice to meet you. You see, he he goes over. Um, so you're inside of his office, and he goes over by his his little potbelly stove. Um, and he mo- removes like some of the kindling out of the way, and he pulls out of a, a bottle of some clear liquid, and he says, "Looks to you guys, and he says, uh, yeah, I keep this around for medicinal purposes. Oh, After I'm the sure. events that we've been in through <laughs> today, I think we're entitled to a shot to our health." Amen. So he 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 pulls out a few glasses. He says, "You guys are free to imbibe." I see. for me, thing. I have one vibe. Okay. And so he says, and so he, he drinks it down, and you see that the priest, he also takes a uh, drink as well. He says, that was some, some fast talking out there that you, you fellas did. He says, um, and he, looks, he looks at you, Solomon. He says, I don't know what Bible you've been reading from, and right now I don't really care. You you saved our bacons out there. Uh. So, Father, I'll, I'll nod to him and say, you know, uh, well, I, I saw something about to happen, that, some violence about to happen that I did not want to see unfold, sir. Thank God that you were here. And um, Constable Clark, after washing down the second glass of that liquor that he has, um, he says, oh, uh, let me introduce you. Uh, this is Father Henry Leclerc. He's the uh, priest here at... Uh, St. Agnes Church that we have in town. Um, Father, these are, and he'll go down, this is Solomon here, the one that butchered the holy book, but <laughs> it seems like you didn't take And the one who nailed their holy books. <laughs> um, this one right here uh, is, your name is Chang. Chang, 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 Chang Lu. Chang Lu. This is, uh, of course, we've, we've just gotten introduced to George Volkov. Um, this is Theo Raptus, if I got that name right. You got and, it. And uh, this one here is Robert, Robert Feynman, right? Yeah, okay. And th- so you guys get uh, introduced in. Um, you're free to... Um, did you guys, did your boys find anything uh, out there? Yes. Well, yeah, we found some interesting stuff. Um, you mentioned some, uh, Chang mentioned some gold. We found yeah. some unlicensed, unclassified jewelry and valuable precious metals. Uh, I don't know what he would be doing with this or hiding it in his shed. Uh, well, we might as well show him then. Okay. So you show him and you, you pull out. Did you, um, you pretty much put back everything you found in there, right? Yeah. All right, so you, you, let, you lay it out onto the... the uh, the table here, and he's going through some of this, and um, he sees a piece, and he says, huh, this looks like my grandmother's, and he's looking at it, and he says, yeah, this looks like my grandmother's punch. You said it was, you found it on his property? Yeah. We suspect... Well, we tell him what we suspect. We suspect these is some sort of grave robbing stuff going on here. Okay. Um, it's kind of obvious. We, it was obvious to all of us. Okay. Give me a spot hidden, everyone. Okay. Okay. Oh, Let's use the clear dice and the orange dice. I did not make it. I did not make it. Nine. I made I got it. two. Make it. <laughs> okay. Maybe play a lot. All right, so you make it, um, and George, you made it. Yeah, with a uh, not a critical, an extreme. Extreme, nice, nice. Um, so when you guys mention grave robbery, um, grave robbery and grave uh, robbing, um, you happen to like look at the you're you're look you're you're standing in front of both um, the constable and the father. You look at the father and you see him grimace. 
a bit. But he quickly, uh, his face quickly goes back to being sort of a, a neutral face. But you, you've noticed sort of a grimace on his face. Uh, sorry, a, a character, uh, a grimace? So what are you... He scrunched up his face like he was disgusted or... Okay, so he's like kind of pissed. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. Okay. Um... So you basically tell him that. So he's like, my, what What else did you boys find there? Strange symbols on their tombstones. I'll show him the rubbing that we did. Yeah. Okay. Father, does that mean anything to you? Um, the, the father looks at it and he says, no, but it looks like some sort of witchcraft or some... Someone does look like any Sorry, uh, I character, what does the actual symbol look like? Okay, so basically it's a circle with okay. a triangle at its center, okay. and there's an eye, one eye in the center of the triangle. And you see what... Yeah, yeah my character's pretty lost at that, too. Like, he's got no idea. <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? Duh. Hey, Wayne, can I do occultism on that? Yeah, sure. can I do that, too? Sure. I didn't okay. even think about that. One second. Okay, so occult is... I did not make it. So, okay. If I can Eight. make this... Oh, my dice fell all over the place. <laughs> okay, give me a sec. Ah, <laughs> oh, and then it goes again. Yeah, 65. I totally failed that. Button. Yeah, I failed, I failed mine, too. So nothing, yeah. nothing, comes, nothing comes up. Um... As far as, yeah, as far as that goes, you, you don't um, recognize the symbol at all. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, Lewis has, like, a lot of symbology like that. <laughs> so that's, like, nothing, like... <laughs> all right. Well, um, folks, it is 11 o'clock now. Yeah. Um, it's not much of a cliffhanger, but um, we can pick up right here next time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Thanks, yeah. guys. No, thanks to everyone. Yes, yeah. thank you all for playing. That was, that was great. Thanks, thanks to everybody who's watching. Thanks. Uh, if you, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up. Please tune in next Wednesday for the next episode of Canis Mysterium. Until next time, always remember: if there's no light left to guide your path, your only choice is to venture into the darkness. Good night and good gaming.